Hello, everybody, and welcome to Skeesh, and this is the episode four review for Make Ine, Too Many Losing Heroines. So a lot happened this episode, so I'd like to just get into it. We had a lot of plot going on. Not like the plot in episode three, we got real plot going on. There was so much character development that happened in this episode. It was jam-packed with new stuff. It was just an all-around great episode of the show, and I would even go as far to say it was the best one so far. So before I do get into it, uh, I am in a different room here. My room back home is being painted, so it's a train wreck right now. And also, I'm not going to show as many clips of the actual show because YouTube has not been very kind to Skeesh lately. So I'm just going to show some static shots as opposed to the actual clip, just so YouTube does not decide to demonetize the video like they have been with the last one. That's why there were a couple parts missing from the beach episode. So we had to take those out and I couldn't really fix it. So that's why there's going to be some static shots and not as much moving motion going on in this one. I'll try and play around with it in the next couple episode reviews and we'll see what happens. If YouTube wants to play nice with Skeesh, then I'll play nice with them. So let's get into the episode review. All right, so starting off where we left on episode three, we had Komadi confess to the club president and we were left on a cliffhanger. But we finally got an answer and it... It was what I was expecting, but not the way I was expecting it. We don't get a clear answer from the president. He doesn't just shoot her down like I was expecting, which is really great, which is awesome because Komadi didn't seem like the type of character that had a chance with the president just because her character type and just the way she was portrayed in the show so far. So he thinks about it. He doesn't really go right in and say no, which is actually really commendable. And I think it's actually cool that they did that. It's a little different for these rom-coms. And we also see the vice president here. Now, we kind of got some hints that they were close. Uh, their childhood friends. You know, we have that with Inami and her ex-lover. But uh, we did get some hints earlier in the show. And we get them really, really up front here. So vice president here gets mad at the president. We can pretty much assume why. She had cahoots for him the whole time. And Komadi kind of messed that up. So this next scene, we get Nukumizu talking with the president, asking for some advice. And Nukumizu is probably the most level-headed guy in this whole show. This dude has a lot of wisdom for not having a lot of experience in the dating scene. So they just talk for a bit, and vice president eventually shows up. And it's up to president and vice president to kind of talk out their differences. We do come to find that he did ask her out a year ago. And what he thinks was a no uh, he just did a roundabout way of doing it, not the normal, hey, will you go out with me? Skiate kurasai. He like worded it weird and she was just playing along with it because she thought it was a joke. And throughout the show, we keep getting like really, really, really small fractals of a growing relationship between Anna and Nukumizu. In this one, he was holding her hand the whole time. Of course, he probably didn't mean anything by it. She noticed it. She's like, are you going to let go of my hand? And this next scene was actually really sad. It was it was hard to see Komadi so upset over it. And it's it's expected when you get turned down from your lover. This one was pretty heavy. I, I actually got a little teary-eyed watching this because Komadi is such a wholesome character. Especially in this episode, she really shines. Her wholesomeness really comes out later in this episode. You see how how nice and understanding of a person she is. So it's really just her processing her feelings. Nukamizu really doesn't have anything to say. I mean, in that situation with someone who has no experience and someone who just someone who just threw all their feelings into something and got turned down to just to a big no you know that's that's a lot to take and someone like Nukamizu you can't really say anything to help those people out you know you just got to let them process their emotions and that's another thing I respect Nukamizu for is because he just let her do it he didn't try and be like the white knight he just he let her cry let her duke it out with herself and I think that's the best situation that could have come out of this now the next scene was like really where Komadi came out to shine because she came to terms with what happened you would expect this huge awkwardness to come about in between the group because they are they are on like a trip Komadi comes out swinging man and she has nothing but respect for the president and the vice president who she lost to so she's just talking normally to the president probably a little shy a little nervous to both of them but she's really upfront about it she's just like hey this is the lit club and I just wanted to remain the lit club. Now, the one part that was actually really wholesome was she went up to the vice president and basically said, hey, will you check this out for me? Like, there's no hard feelings. Like, you won fair and square. And Komadi was super respectful about it. And the vice president, clearly you can see her start crying here. She was like super upset about it because she doesn't want to hurt Komadi, but she also has her own thing. It just came to be the way it is that Komadi lost and she won, but they were both really respectful about it. And you don't see that a lot in rom-coms you, you really get a lot of this 
frustration and miscommunications but here it's like everyone is really almost grown up for being so young here we get another little hint of Nukamizu and Anna's relationship a little smile I really wish I could like throw the videos in this was a really fun scene to watch so it's kind of killing me that I just can't play it in the damn video so throughout the episode Nukamizu comes upon Anna's friends saying stuff about him and her relationship in the class and being the shy guy that he is he decides to try and cut relationships with Anna to spare her for lack of a better term he doesn't want to embarrass her he doesn't want rumors spreading about her She's the popular girl and he's the weird shy guy. So they end their relationship here. They get in a little quarrel, but it really solves itself very quickly. And this is what I love about the show. And I'll get into that in just one second. So this is a scene I wanted to talk about. Before this, we just had a couple conversations here and there. Anna and Nukumizu kind of had some awkward confrontations. Komadi came to the balcony and talked with them a bit. Haha, you joined the dumped club and stuff like that. Just kind of playing jokes on him and stuff. But this is where it really gets thick. We have Anna's ex-lover talk to Nukamizu. And pretty much what he's saying is, hey, I've heard the rumors, and I think you guys are a great pair, and I support you, and Anna moving on from me because I want her to be happy. He creates this big fight that gets resolved rather quickly, and it's actually really awesome to see all the characters communicate like normal, something that you don't get from all these rom-coms all the time. So he says some stuff about her moving on, kind of saying like, hey, this is what I want for you. This is what you should do. And Anna does not like that. She doesn't want someone deciding what to do for her. Nukamizu jumps in and basically says the same thing. So he basically giga chads it up. And Anna jumps in and basically tells the both of them to shut the hell up. I get to decide what I want to do. Neither of you get to tell me what I am to do. Like I've been hounding the whole time. They communicate with each other and the whole situation gets resolved. There's no hard feelings in this this trifecta here. Everyone apologizes to each other. So Nukamizu and Anna's relationship is repaired. Everybody's kind of getting along here. We see them all gather on the balcony. This is probably going to be like the key point that everyone kind of gathers and becomes friends and builds a relationship upon. At the end of the episode, we get Nukamizu and Anna back on the roof. They set it up as a to make it look like Nukamizu is going to confess. And right when he's going to say what he has to say, Anna turns him the hell down. She says, no, I'm not going to date you. And he says, can we be friends? You know, they just kind of threw in a funny little thing there. So they laugh about the misunderstanding and all is well, pretty much. Like that was a, that was the episode. It was really good. So episode four was probably my favorite of the entire series so far. So much happened. It was so full of plot and so much character development. It was hard to hard to dislike this episode, honestly. We learned so much about the other characters, especially Komadi. We really saw how understanding and kind she is as a character. And the whole club for that matter, like Lemon, Lemon Chan, I forgot to mention, was out in the woods trying to collect beetles to just try and cheer her up because everybody knew how upset she was. So that's the end of today's video. If you found anything informative or interesting, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of episode four of Make Ine. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and that bell, and we'll see you on the next video.